Hi, I'm going to go over basically all of the stuff you need to know about Solana Wallet. So that includes private keys, different uh, encodings of private keys, what is a private key versus a seed phrase, how can I generate a private key, how can I generate a seed phrase, and how can I convert that to a public key. Okay, um, and for the last parts, we're going to use the blockchain API. So if you uh, want to use a different method, uh, that won't be covered uh, in this video, but you can you know, feel free to uh, look that up. So just the basics. Um, there are generally, if you're looking at a wallet, uh, two ways you can authenticate to prove that, um, you know, that wallet's yours. And, uh, you know, one of the typical ways is a user that you see is a private key. And the other typical user-facing way that you see is a seed phrase. Um, and a seed phrase is generally, you know, generally consists, it's a mnemonic seed phrase. So it consists of words, like English words, and it, it's, um, and uh, usually consists of like 12 words. Okay. So um, a private key is a, like, uh, sort of, it, if it's base 58 encoded, which is one way it can be encoded, it's a string of like basically incoherent letters and numbers. If it's uh, if it's not encoded, then it's an array of integers. So I'll show you how both can appear to the user, and then how you take that and you can convert it to a public key. So now, what is the point of private keys and seed phrases? To authenticate your wallet, right? They're your password, your unchangeable password. So uh, to your wallet. So if you share this um, and somebody has it, they can irreversibly empty funds from your wallet and everything in it. So uh, you need to be very careful with it and you can generate many of them. So you can generate one that's just for um, that's just for you know your, your personal stuff and then maybe one that's just for trading on this one exchange or you know you can generate many. So um, what is the difference between a seed phrase and a private key? So, um, well, a seed phrase, from the user perspective, does not convert, per se, directly to one public key. So a seed phrase can generally be used to make many different public keys. Um, okay, so how does that work? Well, there are two other sort of things uh, that you have to take into account. Okay, uh, so what happens is you take a seed phrase and then you combine it with two other things and that creates one single public key address. Now, sorry for not defining, but a public key address is actually, it's an address that you share and it's what people uh, use to send you any sort of crypto, any, you know, NFT or whatever. Um, okay, so in order to go from seed phrase to that address, you need to derive that address and uh, you need more information than just the seed phrase, okay? But the extra information is, you know, usually not really shown to the user. So, well, one part isn't. So that extra two things are first the derivation path, okay? And, um, and the passphrase. So the derivation path is basically how, um, sorry. So light's being kind of weird. How, how that, um, the derivation path is basically uh, a path that explains literally how to derive the public key. Okay, and there are different parts of that path, so that it can include. Um, so first, uh, it's the. Um, I, I think yeah, I think there's like one standard bit forty four. So there's different standards, right? Um, and the main one right now is forty four. So um, it's just that's just like a standard, right? Um, and then the next part is the blockchain. Right, so Solana is 501, I think Ethereum is 60. So these are, it's sort of 44 slash then 501 for Solana, right? Then slash two more things, slash zero, slash zero. And one is, um, I forgot, but they're like, it's like the wallet um, that you want to index into and then, you know, something else or whatever. All that matters is you can change any of these, uh, any of the latter parts, right? Slash zero, slash zero and get a whole new public key, right? Um, so we'll go we'll go over that and so the, the purpose of that is like let's say you want to actually be you know be anonymous sort of and just create a quick new wallet you can just increment the path so you don't need to create a new seed phrase okay 
So just changing that will give you an entirely new public key that's not traceable to that seed phrase unless you make some sort of connecting transaction, right? Okay, so then the other thing is a passphrase. It's just a one string of, uh, it's, it's called one word, but really it can contain spaces, so it's not just a word, but, and then that's like an extra thing you can add on if you want to be extra secure. So even if they get your seed phrase, they'd have to guess your passphrase too, right? So uh, all three combine to get the public key. Okay, you change anything in your passphrase from dog. If your passphrase is dog, you change it to dogs, plural. Um, that will get you a whole new public key. Okay, so we'll, we'll show that in this demo. And then the other thing is that you can use then these three things to actually get a private key. So you can derive a private key from these three things. And a private key is useful because that corresponds to exactly one public key, okay? So you don't have to go through this mess of which public key is this? Is this the one in my phantom wallet with the seed? Because what happens is people will get a seed freeze and they won't know the derivation path, right? So it just gets confusing. Whereas with a private key, you know exactly which public key it is because there can only be one, okay? So let's just do some tests. So, you know, as I said, we're gonna use a blockchain API. It's very easy to use. Uh, you know, I, I founded it, so this, this YouTube channel is uh, for it. So um, once PyCharm decides to uh, stop uh, glitching out, we can type something in this terminal. Um, it likes to do this sometimes. But basically, the, uh, the idea here is we're just going to pip install block the blockchain API. Okay. So, um, you know, there are... Right, so you can install it here, and the other way you can install it, if you want to make sure it's updated, right? Uh, so this is actually, let me see, I actually don't think this is updated. Uh, let's see, you can check the version by doing pip show the blockchain API. Yeah, so the real current version is like, you know, five something, so upgrade, right? Yeah. All right, so you can upgrade it with pip install. Yep, so there we go. Now we have the correct version. Pip install the blockchain API dash dash upgrade. Okay, the other way you can do it is go to interpreter settings and uh, click plus up here and type in the blockchain API, etc. Okay, so from the blockchain API, import the blockchain API resource. Okay, and then we'll just do a main function here. So we just have to do two things before we can continue coding. One is uh, get a seed phrase that we can test with, okay? And the other is uh, is get the private key, okay? And this is going to be the base58 private key, okay? And then this uh, regular private key we'll get from Soulflare, okay? So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to retrieve these three things, and we're going to get our API secret key, so um, for the blockchain API, so because we need to do that. Okay. Okay, so first let's get, I guess we'll just install Phantom, right? So let's just install it here. And let's now install Soulflare. Okay, so create a new wallet. <laughs> this is just a garbage wallet, so not too worried about the password. So the password is not the passphrase, right? This is the this this also confuses people. The password is just just uh, opens the wallet, but it doesn't have to do with your with the passphrase at all, actually. Okay, so now that we have the seed phrase, which you don't want to share with anybody, right? We'll put that in here. I've saved it. Okay, uh, great. Okay, soul flutter now, let's add to. I don't think this will work, will it? Oh, okay, it does. Okay, so now it also gives me a seed phrase, but I don't need that.
No good. And then the other thing we need is we want, so now we're going to get the, because um, here Soulflare provides this private key in a different format. So I want to show you how to deal with that format. See, it provides this array here. Okay. And then Phantom, on the other hand, see, also, see, Soulflare calls this private key. Phantom also calls this format private key. And uh, it can confuse people. See? So this is the base 58 encoded private key. All right. Now, let's get, so we're going to be using uh, docs.blockchainapi.com. Uh, you can go to dashboard.blockchainapi.com or just, you know, uh, click here. Okay. So now let's say, uh, let's just show derive um, public key, right? And the wallet is going to uh, equal Solana wallet. So let's first try with the secret recovery phrase. Okay, and then we can also do. So, you know, this is the default. So, this is what Phantom uses. So, we actually don't have to provide it, but um, in the passphrase, is, is nothing. So, um, so, let's print this public key. Okay, so that should be what we have in, uh, in Brave over here. Yeah, EK4, right? Uh, EK4, okay. So then what happens is that if we do this again with the private key, see, this is why it's just so much easier with the private key. If we do that again, um, it'll, it should be the same output. See? Okay, great. Um, and then look, if we increment this or change any of it, see, it's going to be a whole new pu uh, public key. C49, right? And look, if we change this to A, it's going to be completely new. FQQ, double A, CYXN. It's completely different. So you can basically create an arbitrary number of wallets here. Um, there's a private key. You can only do one. Okay, and then the other thing is, um, the other thing is now, uh, let's do derive. Oh yeah, and so the other thing is that actually, let's try this. Now let's derive the private key from this wallet and it should, uh, whoops, it should be the same as up here. So, oh, whoops, I was like, why is that different? No, it's because we, I didn't put these back, okay. <laughs> it should be the same as, uh, as up here. Yep, there it is. See? Okay. And then you also have it in this other format, so it's even easier um, if you want to handle with that. So, okay. Uh, now let's try with this regular private key. So to do that, let's just figure it out to make sure this works. So we're using derived public key, derived private key. Okay, and then there we go. We have that here. Um, whoops. Two I, two I. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, and then and then if you you know wanted to, uh, you could say generate private key as well and create a completely new one. And you can also use this function to generate a seed phrase as well. So it's called generate secret secret key, but it should be called generate seed phrase. Uh, I did not print them. Yeah, I mean, so there it is, or it's coming, yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. And one last thing, how does the generate work? How do I know I'm not taking someone else's wallet? Well, there are so many possibilities that 
that won't happen. Um, you know, there's just the probability of a collision, uh, or in other words, the probability that I randomly generate either a seed phrase or a private key that's the same as someone else's that has is using it is zero, uh, and pretty much will always be zero. So that's the uh, that's why you can just randomly generate it. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. I hope this is useful.